okay let's start with history taking an examination from the book Ari arun uh, arun uh, sarmila babu arun kumar okay so first thing is history taking an examination in history taking the austerity indices we should know about the basic terminology so gravida is what is gravida refers to number of pregnancy including the present pregnancy the woman has had irrespective of the period of gestation and pregnancy outcome <coughs> what do you mean by gravida gravida means what is the total number of pregnancy including the current pregnancy and irrespective of the period of gestation and pregnancy outcome in the previous pregnancy what is parity refer the number of pregnancy that have crossed the period of viable that is more than 28 weeks excluding the present pregnancy what is live birth refer the number of live in child at present our son refer the expulsion of the product of consumption refer the period of viability that is 28 weeks so viability refer the ability to survive then what are the different terminology like primary gravida means woman who is pregnant for the first time multi is woman who has had at least one previous pregnancy irrespective of pregnancy outcome she might have aborted or delivered a viable baby whatever the type of outcome irrespective of the outcome if she is pregnant more than two days multi gravida at least more than one time as one previous one early parents woman has never carried a previous pregnancy up to the period of viability Okay, nulliparous means woman who has never carried a pregnancy up to the period of viability. Parity name. Primary parity woman who has had one previous viable pregnancy. Multi parity woman who has had two or more previous viable pregnancy. Grand multi parity woman who has five or more. Remember, five is the grand. Nulli is woman who has never been pregnant so far. For children, woman who is in labor. Peripheral who has just delivered a baby. Okay, these are the terms. Then what is the trimester in pregnancy? The first trimester is starting from the time of the conception up to 12 completed weeks. We will tell it is first trimester. The second trimester is starting from 13th from 13th week up to 28 week complete 28 completed with 28 completed with uh, weeks of gestation. Third trimester from 29th week up to delivery. Okay, this is the trimester wise. Then what is torn pregnancy? What is preterm pregnancy? What is postdated? What is prolonged or postdom pregnancy? The torn pregnancy, the pregnancy after thirty-seven completed weeks of gestation. What is preterm pregnancy after twenty-eight weeks gestation, but before thirty-seven completed weeks gestation? What is postdated pregnancy continuing beyond forty weeks of pregnancy gestation up to forty-two weeks? Pregnancy continued beyond 40 weeks of gestation up to 42 weeks is called post-dated. 42, 42 weeks. Post-dated. Between 42, 42, 42. Up to prolonged or post-term pregnancy. Pregnancy continued beyond 42 weeks. If it is more than 42, it is post-term. If it is more than 42, between 40 and 42, it is post-dated. Okay, remember these are the terms. Then how will calculate the expected date of delivery and the period of gestation? The expected date of delivery is calculated from the first day of the last menstrual period using the necklace formula. You should add 9 months and 7 days for a woman with a 28 day regular cycle. Okay. The necklace formula rule is best to calculate EDD only if the woman has a regular cycle. Remember this is for regular menstrual cycle prior to conception. There is no history of oral contraceptive pill intake prior to conception. In case the later Population may not resume immediately following the withdrawal of hormone pills. There may be a delay of two to three weeks in resuming ovulation. So, uh, neglect formula is applicable only those patients with a regular menstrual cycle, and there should not be any ossipil intake. If they are ossipil intake, if they suddenly stop that withdrawal of hormone pills, the resumption of ovulation occur two to three weeks delay. So, should not calculate as this uh, regular cycle. Hence, EDD may not be accurate to the neglect formula. Ovulatory or fertilization is typically two week less than period of gestation. Uh, that is, this is ovulatory or fertilization age is typically two weeks less than the period of gestation. Calculated from the LMP is mainly used for embryologists for ART techniques. The ovulatory is 
now to minus 14 days from the um, edd okay how, how we will calculate for a uh, cycle length is more if the cycle length is more than 28 days or if a cycle length is less than 28 days if cycle length is more than 28 days you should add up extra 14 days to the edd that is calculated from the Nicholas formula example for a 35 day cycle add extra 7 days that is 35 minus 28 days is 7 days now the corrected edc is lmp plus 9 month plus 7 days plus extra 7 days okay for a cycle length of less than 28 days deduct the number of day, day, days from edd if it is more than 28 days you have to add up to extra 14 days if it is less than 28 you have to deduct the number of days from the edd calculate the neglis formula for a 25 day cycles you have to deduct 3 days 28 minus 25 is 3 days and the corrected edd is lmp plus 9 plus 7 days minus 3 days if the cycle is more than 45 days or cycles are irregular lmp is not reliable in getting ultrasound scan clinical examination finding are used for determining the period of gestation and the edd okay remember they, they in viva they can ask them like how many percent of women will deliver at particularly at the date of edd actually only four percent of women will deliver in at the time of edd only majority of women will deliver either two weeks before or one week after the edd okay what are the viva kernels for this topics wow what should be done if the patient doesn't remember in her lmp if she doesn't know how will it ask the history if LMP is not known, the patient not sure LMP, the detail may be collected from the following. You should ask history. Women may be asked to relate her LMP to the, some important festivals or occasions that say might remember. You should ask some important festivals or some occasion, marriage or any birth ceremony during um, last one month, two months. And you ask when her UPT was class became positive. Or you can ask for date of quickening, quickening or perception of fetal movement for the first time during pregnancy is right around 16 to 18 weeks in primary in multigravita it is 16 to 18 weeks. If it is easy multigravita primary gravita, it is usually felt as 18 to 20 weeks. Okay. The details, dates of intravitreal inseminations or in vitro fertilization are known in women treated to infertility. Or else you can do an obstetric examination, check the patient identity records. You check for uterine size and early gestations for fundal height in subsequent identical visit. Of study ultrasound you can do checks whether the patient has a dawn dating ultrasound scan for the first time or any ultrasound in the second trimester. Pause documentation of fetal heart rate when a trans abdominal scan is at 7 weeks. If you are doing a 7 week scan you can get uh, if you are at 7 weeks you will get the uh, like uh, documentation of the fetal heart rate. You, or if you are using a Doppler, you can get it by 10 weeks. If you are using stethoscope, you can hard by 20 weeks. Okay, remember these are the things. If you use ultrasound, the heartbeat can be detected by transabdominal scan at 7 weeks. If you use a handheld Doppler, it is at 10 weeks or by auscultation by st stethoscope at 20 weeks. Okay. The period of gestation are the total number of days from the first day of LMP till date. Then uh, how we will calculate the period of gestation is total number of days from the first step LMP till date then divided by 7 to cover the period of weeks. What is good date? What is excellent and bad date? Good, excellent and bad date. Excellent dates, women with adequate clinical information. She know her normal LMP, 28 day cycle, no recent use of possible with the uterine size in correlation with the gestational years, uterine size is corresponding with one ultrasound scan has been done between 16 to 24 weeks of gestation correlated with the period of gestation as per LMP okay so women with inadequate clinical information with two, um, two uh, ultrasound scan between 16 to 24 weeks of gestation showing linear fetal growth or similar edd what is good this is the excellent date what is excellent date if the woman uh, has a with adequate information about her LMP and uh, it is a 28 day cycle she doesn't have any use of history of recent use of possible use and the uterine size is almost correspond to the gestational age and she has a one ultrasound count ultrasound scan between 60 to 24 weeks that is also corresponding with the period of gestation as per lmp uh, I mean, if, in, if she has an inadequate clinical information but if she is inadequate clinical information she has to 
two electrons it has to be a two electrons can be between mm, between 16 and 24 weeks station will be showing linear fetal growth in similar LED women will tell good dates good date will tell when women with adequate clinical examination no normal LMP 28 day cycle more recent to show cycle with uterine size corresponding gestational age with one ultrasound good date double again if it is excellent date the ultrasound has to be done between 16 and 24 weeks if it is a good date the ultrasound has to be done after 24 weeks of gestation correlated with the PSG waste by LMP women with inadequate clinical examination with two or more ultrasound examination if she has inadequate clinical examination she doesn't have any cycle no doesn't know her LMP doesn't know her, she doesn't remember her uh, is also not correlating in that case if she have a two or more ultrasound examination after 24 hours the gestation is showing linear growth and similar ATD. Poor in any situation other than above, it is called poor dates. Other neglect terminology in obstructive. They can ask other neglect neglect rule, neglect pelvis, neglect obliquity. What is neglect pelvis? It is a type of asymmetry. It is a type of asymmetrical contracted pelvis due to arrested development of one or other sacrum. So neglect pelvis will tell it is a it is a type of asymmetrical contracted pelvis due to arrest arrested development of one ala of the sacrum. So you should go by a delivery by cesarean section. What is neglect obliquity? Neglect obliquity refer to a you remember a n m okay anterior obliquity is neglect obliquity the, it is referred to anterior asymptomatism or anterior parietal bone presentation during a vaginal delivery okay this is the two neglect terminology in the obstructives okay stop for Then if no complaints, mention that patient has a compare routine and tele checkup for admitted uh, uh, admitted for safe confirmation and right, okay. Then history of presenting complaint. Uh, elaborate uh, describe of the presenting complaint with the details as mode of concept, severity, durations, aggravating relieving factor. Mention the current admissions, treatment history of the patient as an inpatient admitted ward. History of present pregnancy, you have to write in the first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. And you write in the first time whether the conception is spontaneous or it is following an infertility treatment or obliterates an induction or ART technology, IUI or XC. The pregnancy was confirmed at DAS days of amenorrhea, how many days after amenorrhea? By which test, whether they have done by UPT, whether they have done ultrasound, at which place. Then, is there any history of hyperemesis gravity in the first trimester? Then, that has to mention if there is a history of fever in the fever with rashes, history of bleeding PV, history of exposure to radiation, history of drug in the first trimester. Then whether antenatal investigation dating scan has been done said to be normal. Second trimester number of antenatal visit till now she has been uh, uh, come to antenatal checkups. Then timing and quickening felt, history of NADT immunization, number of doses and period of gestation infection were received, history of iron calcium supplementation. Is there any bleeding PB in during the second trimester? History of symptoms as to pre eclampsia, such as excessive weight gain, swelling of the feet, decreased urine output, headache, blurring of vision, because all these are the imminent symptoms of eclampsia and pre eclampsia. Whether the screening test for GDM gestational diabetes was performed or not, whether the fetal anomaly scan was done or not, whether if it is done and whether it is normal, or is there any defectors detected. Okay. Then in the third trimester, you should ask number of antenatal visit till now. Then history of symptoms of preeclampsia is the same thing. Excessive weight gain, swelling of feet, uh, decrease urine output, headache, blurring of vision, epigastric pain. All this you have to ask. Okay. Then whether perceiving normal fetal movement, history of iron calcium infiltration, history of bleeding PV, history of licking PV, history of pain abdomen, history of bowel disturbances. Okay. Then... Uh, Then in menstrual history, you should ask the age at men are menstrual cycle whether it is regular cycle or irregular cycle. And the cycles once in how many days their cycles is lasting for duration of the, the flow. Whether the flow is moderate or if it's scanty amount, you should ask you clot and dyspanoria, LMP. Always end the menstrual history with LMP. 
always end with lmp don't start with lmp okay remember this thing usually you are starting with lmp or habit then you go for the marital history married for the first how many years so whether it is a consanguineous marriage or non consanguineous marriage if it is consanguineous marriage means in the degree of consanguinity whether it is first degree second degree or third degree variety okay then in the first offset history uh, detailed history in the previous all previous pregnancy you should mention uh, suppose in the first of study history pregnancy how the pregnancy was confirmed whether all pd ultrasound whether she was a book demonized or antenatal period was uneventful or had any complications as a preeclampsia gestational diabetes pre-dipatum numerous dust then uh, name of the institution where the delivery has happened admission details period of gestation at which the patient was admitted when and what gestation was admitted whether it is a preterm or term delivery whether admitted with labor pain or leaking pb or bleeding pb or any specific complaint how she went to labor how what happened after delivery like uh, at what uh, whether she went uh, with labor pain whether she went with the prm or preprm or any bleeding provision delivery detail onset of labor spontaneous onset or they have induced or any oxidation augmentation and the prostaglandin or prostaglandin gel whether the mesoprostol oral tablet whether term delivery preterm delivery or postterm delivery whether spontaneous vaginal delivery happen or any instrumental delivery or cesarean section has been done if cesarean section was done then you should ask the digital history was been taken mentioned in case of previous lss part one that tend to go okay then uh, baby details you have to ask whether it is a baby is a live birth or still birth if still birth or the face born or is macerated and you have to ask the cause of death if she know she can tell well, you can ask the sex of the baby and the birth weight of the baby whether she is cried or uh, immediately after birth or any nice admission has been done for the baby any congenital anomaly detected both antenatally or any postnatally time of starting breastfeeding of the baby breastfeed of the baby one hour after birth, how many hours after birth and then time period of which explosive breastfeeding was given Presence, uh, present age, what is her current age and how she is, uh, whether she is healthy or any comorbidity. Then fear perium, then mention whether the uneventful or whether there are any complications like fever, post, like discharge, low chia, wound gapping, history of prolonged hospital stay for any specific patients. Okay. In contraception detail, history of contraception is how may, in between the pregnancy whether she has taken any contraception methods and the type method of contraception and the how long she has been used in case past history of abortion uh, you have to ask the regarding the how she is confirmed the pregnancy whether she is upt or ultrasound and uh, at how many days of amenorrhea whether the miscarriage has happened spontaneously or she has done inducedly or if induction has been done whether uh, what is the reason for inductions a period at what gestation she has aborted this baby whether medically aborted or it is surgically aborted whether any fever or false colic distance following abortion, the time when the patients resume menstrual cycle following abortion has to mention, history of any contraception following the abortion has been taken or not, you should ask. Okay, then you have to go to the past history. Past, you have to in the past history, there will be medical history, there will be a surgical history, there will be any blood transmission or any sexual transmission infections. In the medical history, you should ask such as diabetes, hypertension, tuberculosis, jaundice, epilepsy, bronchial asthma thyroid disorder of any other medical illness then surgical history there past issue of any surgery then any history of blood transmission history of sexual transmitted disease you should ask okay then personal history we should ask about the sleep and normal bowel of our sleep appetite history of any addiction like tobacco uses or any alcohol consumption smoking and history of drug allergy or drug intake for chronic illness then diet history personal history diet history in diet history whether it is mixed vegetarian diet mixed diet or vegetarian diet whether a record of the patient daily food intake should be documented to calculate the for the you should calculate the last 24 hour meal how what are the uh, in lunch in dinner breakfast what she has taken in the last 24 based on that you can calculate the daily calorie and protein intake it is mentioned as calorie intake is in kilocalorie per day if it is a protein intake you should uh, made in a gram per day protein has to be mentioned in the gram calorie has to be in the kilo calorie okay then uh, it is mentioned whether diet is adequate in calorie or protein intake else mentioned that diet is this much deficient calorie and dispense deficient in protein always you have to write in the 
how much deficit in calorie how much deficit in the protein okay then in the family history you should uh, ask uh, any history of diabetes hypertension in the family tuberculosis multiple pregnancies congenital anomaly genetic disorder that has to be mentioned in the file then last after this all this thing you have to do a summary of the summary of your history what is your summary of history summary is made at the end of the history taking we should include the patient name is you should write the name of the patient age of the patient obstetric index degree gravida para living hours then uh, last menstrual period expected date of delivery period of gestation chief complaint and significant positive and negative history and any associated complication pregnancy can be identified as a low risk or high risk as per the completion of the history taking okay then clinical examination you would go for the clinical following relevant point to the examination has to be taken these are the gadget required for the examination they will ask uh, figure you have to need some gadget like one and weight uh, measurement uh, weight and weight, weight and height measurement tool we need a knee hammer and need an inch tape needed a stethoscope we, we need a spignomanometer for bp measurement thermometer for temperature okay first you do a general physical examination whether the patient is comfortable at rest or not build video build or uh, as you well build or nourishment build the nourishment whether it is adequately or poorly is height and weight have to mention then uh, body mass index have to calculate by weight by height in men's kg meter square pre pregnancy uh, body weight or weight in the early first trimester take for calculation of the bmi so okay remember so always you try to calculate the bmi based on the pre pregnancy and the early first trimester pregnancy weight to calculate the bmi you use this bmi like pre pregnancy bmi or first trimester bmi check for any abnormal gait or uh, scoliosis scoliosis check for pallor vector cnss clubbing nipple the vector edema presence or absence of pallor edema are the two general examination finding that are usually noted during each antenatal visit every antenatal visit you should do the pallor and edema okay don't forget then vitals after general physical examination you do a vitals in vital temperature whether the patient is feb febrile or febrile if febrile means the temperature in degrees celsius for an equal rate then it means Let's get the volume character of the all peripheral pulses are equally filled. Pulse rate is 84 watts minute. Regular rhythm, normal volume characters, all peripheral pulses equally filled. Respiratory rate in the minutes. Then BP has to be measured in right upper limb, sitting or left lateral position. Then uh, because uh, there is a compression, the superior should not be drawn in the supine positions. That will cause a supine hypertension syndrome. Okay, in thyroid examination mentions whether it is normal presence of any thyroid swelling, thyroid move with depletion or not. In the breast examination mention whether the breast is normal or whether there is presence of any retracted nipple, crack nipple, fissure, distress from the nipple or any palpable lump or mass like fibro, fibroid, fibroma, lump. Okay, then systemic examinations, cardiovascular system, if it is normal, mention clinically normal S1, S2 bar, no more, more with normal limit. CBS and mention part 1 then respiratory rate is normal mention clinically normal normal vascular with sound with normal limit in obstetric examination prerequisite you have to explain the procedure to the patients you have to take a kind heart of the prerequisite remember prerequisite very important compared to you doing the cases before before doing the obstetric abdominal examination these are the things has to be remembered first you have to explain the procedure to the patients what are you have to going to do you have to take a obtain the uh, you have to take a you know, consent ask the patient to empty the bladder ensure privacy get a screen prior to examination ensure adequate lightning stand on the right side of the patients a male doctor should have the presence of a female attendant during examination ask the patient to lie down in supine positions or cover the lower limb with a blanket request the patient to undress the part to be examined warm your fingers and examine from non-tender area remember always start from the non-tender area to the tender area okay start from the inspection abdominal distension and canture has to be mentioned whether it is flanks are full or not umbilication is normal inverted inverted or fast with skin surface linea nigra or stray gravidum are looked for any scar or sinuses any cough impulse and hernia orifice are checked mention the scope impulse is present or absent okay then uh, then uh, if any scar present check for cough impulse at scar site to rule out incisional hernia then fundal height patient position the patient should be in dorsal position with leg flex slightly abducted 
the correct the test rotation so first you have to correct always remember this is a very very important that examiner is noticing correction of the dext rotation this is a triple star correction of dext rotation in one hand during frontal height First position of the patients obstetric for patient depends to frontal height okay palpate the ulnar border okay remove the position patient should be dorsal position leg is slightly fixed and abducted okay then palpate with the ulnar border of the left hand to determine the upper border of the uterus either from below upward till the surface resistance of the uterus from above downward you can go below upward or above downward till fundus of the uterus is filled appearance of resistance before taking away from the palpating hand ask permission to the patient mark the fund right uh, then uh, you have to mark with your pen then uh, sympathetic patient positions sympathetic fund height has been measured then sfh sympathetic fund height the patient should be in dorsal position leg is extended remember this is very 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 important for fundal height okay for fundal uh, okay the for fundal height okay for fundal height that leg should be slightly flex but sympathetic fundal height when you measuring the sympathetic fundal height the leg has to be straight remember this very very important things patient uh, has to be straightened when you measure sympathetic fundal height measure with measuring tape with the um, inches side uh, remember always you have to blind up this thing uh, because you are measuring sympathetic fundal height the, your measurement is in centimeters so you are the centimeter size has to be in the uh, or not you have to don't see the centimeter side it should be blinded so the inches tip you have to inches tip has to be facing off place one side uh, one end of measuring tape over pubic surfaces take the tape across the umbilicus to the making the fundal height on the abdomen turn the tape to check for the sfh measurement in centimeter okay the SFH measurement is the only examination done with the leg pain. Remember, sympathetic fundal height is the only measurement, only examination done with legs of the patient in extended positions. SFH in extended. With, with extended legs, a reference point of the pubic sympathesis remain the same at each visit. While sympathetic pubic may move up or down with a different degree of flexion of the thigh. Okay, then obstetric grips or leopard maneuver. The aim of this grips. First, our aim is obstetric grief help in determine the fetal eye presentation. Grief are performed usually after 34 weeks. Okay, I will always try to do griefs after 34 weeks of gestation as the fetal eye presentation will be variable prior to. Before that, it will be variable, so don't do. Sympathesis fundal height measurement, land bottom measurement, sympathesis fundal height, measuring sympathesis fundal height. Okay. Then. The obstetric grief is done with the patient in dorsal position, leg is flexed. Okay, now slightly abducted, relax the abdominal muscle which makes the palpation easier. Obstetric grief must be performed in a relaxed uterus, palpate gently with the ventral aspect of the finger of the one hand. Examiner face toward the head end of the patient for the first three maneuver and faces toward the leg end of the patient for the fourth maneuver. Remember, first is the frontal grief, that is fastly upward. Palpation is done by facing the head of the end of the patient. Palpate fundus of uterus both hand. You have to palpate the fundus of the patient in both hand. Inference. What is the inference you got? If it is a smooth globular, smooth hard globular palatable mass, is suggestive of fetal head. If a broad, soft, irregular non palatable mass, suggestive of bridge. Then you go for a lateral or umbilical grief. Uh, the palpation is done facing the head end of the patient steady one side you have to steady one side of the uterus with the palm of the hand while palpating the other side then do vice versa you have to steady one side of the uterus with your palm of one hand while palpating the other side the same thing has to do you have to steady the other side and palpate with the other hand palpate one side first then the other side inference if a smooth curve uniform resistance pulse sensitive back if a small knobby irregular part felt sensitive fetal limbs or bots Okay, then first pelvic grip that is pelvic grip, so third leopard maneuver. Uh, that is first pelvic grip. The palpation is done facing the head end of the patient. The ulnar border of the right hand is placed. Ulnar border of the right hand is placed on the upper part of the pubic symphysis. The palpate the fetus between the outstretched. Remember this ward they has to they know they want to know from your mouth this ward. What is this things? Outstretched thumb and the forefinger of right hand. 
have to palpate with outstretched thumbs and forefinger of right hand. You have tried to speak outstretched thumb, forefinger of right hand. What is the inference? Ulnar border of the right hand has to be placed and the upper border of the pubic. Ulnar border of the right hand. This is the ulnar border of the right hand has to be placed over the upper border of pubic. If I say then you palpate the fetus in between your outstretched thumb and your forefinger. Remember you have to do all these things or else they will not allow to pass you. Then present of the fetus. If, uh, if you palpate a heart the inference in the th first third pelvic rib, uh, that is if a smooth or hard globular bilateral mass is spelled like it is head, you brought soft irregular non-bilateral structure is spelled bridge, whether the present uh, or things, whether the present is engaged or not engaged, if the present is freely bilateral, it is not engaged, if the present is fixed non-bilateral, it may be engaged. In transverse lie, the first pelvic rib is empty, okay. Then second pelvic group is the fourth pelvic group, fourth leopard. That is examination is done facing the foot end of the patient. Only obstetric that is done facing the foot end of the patient. Okay. The grief is usually done at a term pregnancy. The grief is usually at a term pregnancy to check if the present is engaged or not. Then place both hand on either side. How will do? Place both hand on either side of the abdomen parallel to the inguinal ligament. Palpate simultaneously with both hands move medially downward. Inference the second pelvic group for the finding of the first pelvic group that is presentation fetus whether the present part is engaged or not. It will give additional information on attitude of the head and is a presentation with the well placed, deep placed, extended head. Another thing it will give attitude of the fetus, okay, whether it is well fixed or uh, well fixed or deep fixed, okay, that thing also it will give. Then following obstetric review, mention the regarding the following uterine activity whether uterus is relaxed, uterus is relaxed or uh, it is tonically, whether uterus is relaxed or acting tone, whether upper is excessive like a remark, scar tenderness to be checked in previous season and section pregnancy to rule out impending scar rupture. Take a chair. Impending scar rupture, the previous corrections uh, gently palpated with palmar aspect of finger of right hand and the patient face simultaneously to look out for any wincing or discomfort with the pain. For the eliciting the scar tenderness, you gently palpate with the palmar aspect of finger. Palmar aspect of finger of right hand, the eliciting scar tenderness. Palmar aspect of the Palmar aspect of the right hand, okay. Palmar aspect. Palmar aspect of your right hand. Then auscultation of the petal, check for petal heart rate. Petal bag, level side of the petal bag, which are hard desk to be placed with your stethoscope, count one minute. The rate has to be regular. Then auscultation of petal artery along the spinal oblical line. Petal heart sound also heard through the back of the fetus. Left is couple range in vertex brief presentation. Through the chest of the fetus in press presentation. Estimated fetal weight has to be calculated by sympathesis from right minus 11 or 12 into 155 gram. That is Johnson formula. Take the value of 11. If you take in 11, then if uh, 11, if that is below the level of chest pain. If you take if 12 head is at or above the level is chest pain. If it is upper then it is, if it is below this comes. Above means highest. 
always remember if at or above you have to take highest that is 12 if it is below it's a less number 11 don't be confused above means highest above means highest so you should take 12 below means lowest you should take 11 remember this by these tricks don't wait for good then obstetric pelvic examination okay the routine vaginal examination not required in antithelial period it may be indicated in case of complicated complete vaginal discharge pelvic pain vaginal examination may be performed after 38 to gestational weeks during labor to obtain information of the cervix and present part membrane and pelvis then uh, prerequisite for vaginal examination the patient has to empty your bladder you have to explain the procedure and gentle get informed consent ensure adequate privacy lightning patient should be in dorsal position thigh flex slightly abducted buttock press in the foot end of the tubule then hands are washed with soap and antiseptic solutions sterile lobes has to go on before examination patient bulbar perineum swabbed with sablon and better prior to the procedure inspection of the external genitalia inspect the mouth pubis labia major minor perineum anal region of any ulcers Wire, skin lesion, varicosity, and involved edema. Then the labia is separated into the urethra, clitoris, and trachea. Then speculum examination uh, done prior to uh, bimanual vaginal examination to visualize the vaginal cervix with the help of good light source. Seam speculum, cusco bivalve speculum inserted into the vaginal on dry septification. Look for any following any abnormal discharge, leaking, bleeding, PV. Then uh, any ulcer, lesion, cervical smear can be also taken. Pap smear can be taken for a vaginal swab for culture if indicated. Bimanual examination is done in early pregnancy when uterus remain a pelvic organ. The index and middle finger, index and middle finger of the examiner, right hand are introduced to the vagina while the left hand is placed on the supra pubic region of the uterus, palpated between the abdominal end and the end of the vagina. Do a gentle systemic examination, cervix consistency, position, any cervical pathology, size, shape of uterus, consistency, and uh, any mass, tenderness felt in the fornexes. Vaginal examination indicated usually prior to induction labor, during labor of following region, to a pelvic assessment through low oxygen pity, to assess cervical ripening prior to the induction of the labor, to assess the fetal present in part, position, artificial rupture of membrane. To note the color of lacquer, if the membrane already ruptured, to rule out cord prolapse, if the membrane is ruptured, to assess cervical effacement dilatation during labor, to assess the station of the presenting part, to note the progress of labor, to confirm the second stage. Case summary. The summary is made at the end of history examination. So you should include the patient's name, age, obstetric indicates, obstetric indexes, LMP, DD, period of history, complaint, significant positive, negative history, any associated complication. Silent feature, gentle study, the provisional diagnosis made, which should be include patient age, after indicated, the complication, current status of the pregnancy, okay.